Have you ever wondered what your life's purpose is? Are you fulfilling your purpose in life? How about this? Are you popular in life? We have a powerful, enriching, and impactful video titled, I Choose Purpose Over Popularity, coming up right now on The Rock World Ministries. Good evening. What may I get started for you? Hmm. I'm thinking about getting the approval of others. Should I? Oh, definitely. I'll have that. Excellent choice. It comes with 2,000 Facebook likes. And for you, madam? Well, I will also have the approval of others, but on a bigger, much nicer plate than hers. Uh, and... Oh, can I get the likes and followers? Of course. Two popularity specials, one with comparison and one without. I'll get that started for you, and also bring out a basket of selfie sticks. Yes, yes please. <laughs> if we haven't met, my name is Chris Calloway. Everybody just calls me Coach. I've been a business and motivational leader for over 30 years, coaching business. I've been a championship winning football coach, coaching players and coaching coaches. And I've been a pastor, coaching life. At the Rock World Ministries, we have a simple mission to enrich lives and impact life for Christ. So we're excited that you joined us today. But before we get started with today's message, Purpose Over Popularity, which I know is gonna be a blessing to you, I wanna encourage your engagement. So if you would, right now, just take a second and go on down and hit that like button. Give us a thumbs up and hit the like, or my favorite, punch that wow face. Love to see those. It tells us that you've clicked on the video and that you're watching us, and that's how we know that you've been engaged with us. And leave a comment. If you have any questions or comments you'd like to leave after watching the message today, make sure you leave those comments. If nothing else, do us a favor. Just type the city and state of where you're watching this video from. It allows us to know where people are watching the videos from. So go ahead and type that city and state in the comment section now, and we'll get started today with a message we call, I Choose Purpose Over Popularity. You know, it's very, very important that uh, we understand the kind of world we live in today. And it's tough sometimes to choose our purpose. Or maybe we don't even know what our purpose is, or we're searching for our purpose. But even if we do know what our purpose is, it's hard to choose purpose over popularity, especially with the, the society that we find ourselves in, with social media. I and mean, we're so worried about what other people think about us. Did they like the picture I posted on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, or they're not commenting on my, my posts on social media. And we're always seeking other people's opinions and approval and direction instead of seeking after the heart of God and the purpose for God in our life. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So I want you to think about something. We are the sum total of the choices we make. I want that to kind of resonate with you. We are the sum total of the choices we've made. We are a result of our choices that we've made in our past. So the question is, who will you become tomorrow? The choices you make today will obviously determine who you will become in the future. Essentially, the decisions that we're making will determine who we'll become and what our tomorrow will look like. But the bottom line is, the bottom line is it is our choice. We have choices to make. So for the next four weeks, we're going to jump into this series called I Choose. Today, as I've mentioned already, Purpose Over Popularity. Next week, we'll get into Surrender Over Control, and there's two additional messages coming in the next four weeks. But well, here, I, want to, I got an exercise for you. I want you to think about this. Imagine, imagine this for just a moment. Imagine that everyone likes you, that everyone approves of you, and everyone likes you. That's cool, right? Well, here's the problem. <laughs> That's never going to happen. You're never going to please everybody, and not everyone's going to like you. There's going to be people that don't really care for you. You're not going to be able to please everyone every day in your life. So how about this? Instead of trying to please everyone and be popular all the time and worry about others' opinion of you, how about you wake up every single day with passion and purpose? Man, let that resonate. Let's wake up every single day and not seek others' approval or popularity, but let's wake up every day and live a life where we are doing something that we're passionate about and that we're fulfilling God's purpose in our life. I mean, we can do that. That's something we can choose to do. We can't choose and force people to like us, but we can choose to be passionate and purposeful in the things that we do in a day in and day out basis. So wake up every day and be passionate and have purpose. Let me go to a few uh, scriptures for you to kind of lay the foundation of the message today. I want to read from Philippians 2.13. 
If you have a Bible, you have a Bible app, you can go ahead and open up your phone and follow along. Or even print out the notes at the website. TheRockWM.com is the website. So if you haven't visited the website, you can go over there and download the notes to the message today. And it gives you our outline and it gives you some places uh, to, of course, write some notes. Or just open up that Bible app and you can follow along with us. Philippians chapter 2.13 says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purposes. Think about that. It is God that works in you and through you to fulfill his good purposes. I mean, note that God wants to work through you to fulfill his purpose for your life. Proverbs 25, in chapter 20, verse 5, it says, The purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, but a man who has understanding draws them out. The purposes of a person's heart are like deep waters. And the person that has understanding can draw them out, draw them out of the deep waters down in your heart and draw out the purpose for your life if you have understanding. So we're going to seek some understanding today. So I'm excited about that. That scripture is really encouraging us to gain understanding. And we hope to provide that for you today. But in today's world, man, that's kind of hard. It is difficult to choose purpose over popularity, as I've already mentioned. One more scripture real quick for you. Acts chapter 5, 38. Therefore, in the presence uh, excuse me. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone, let them go. For if their purpose or activity is human origin, it will fail. Think about what that scripture says right there in Acts 5.38. He's telling us, hey, I advise you to leave these men alone. For if their purpose is of human origin, it will fail. You know, so many times we get off track and we get away from the things that God has purposed in our life. And we don't reach success. We don't gain success. We don't have the favor that we need to get success in areas of our life where we're not following God's purpose for our life. And that scripture right there points it out for us. So major point, let your passion and your purpose drive you. And don't let the approval of others distract you. Let your purpose and your passion drive you, but don't let others distract you from that purpose and from that passion. Here's the good news. It's a choice you can make. That's why the title of this uh, four-part series is I Choose. It's a choice you can make. So say this out loud. If you can't say it out loud, say it in your head uh, to yourself. Say, I choose purpose over popularity. Say it again. I choose purpose over popularity. One more time. I choose purpose over popularity. Make that choice. To don't be distracted by others, but have your purpose and your passion drive you, not others' opinions. But too often we're concerned with what others think about us. I mean, that's just true. I know I'm guilty of it myself. We're so worried about others' view of us and others' opinions of us. Here's another important point. If you don't know the purpose of a thing, you'll misuse the thing. And write that down. If you don't know the purpose of a thing, you will misuse that thing. So if you don't know what the thing was created for, odds are you're going to misuse it. You're not going to use it correctly. You're not going to use it properly because you don't understand its purpose. You, you, uh, let me... <laughs> Um, let me give you an example. I've, I've, I've got a childhood example for you. So I, I used to, I was raised by my grandparents. So I'm going to go back to elementary school here. I was in, I think about fourth grade, started T-ball. My grandparents signed me up on the T-ball team. We went out and um, bought some equipment. And one of the things they bought me, along with all the T-ball equipment, the glove and some cleats and, you know, a, a bat and a helmet and all the things I needed, was an athletic cup. Now, you may know where this is going, right? If you don't know the purpose of the thing, you may misuse it. <laughs> so I had all that sitting in a, a little area of my bedroom. We lived in an apartment complex, and uh, in that complex was some friends of my grandparents, uh, and they had come over to visit. Now, these friends of my grandparents had a little girl in, in uh, my grade. It was my age and fourth grade together. So she came over with her parents, of course, as they were visiting. And uh, me and uh, the little girl ran off to my bedroom as our parents and my grandparents were talking. And we go up, we go into our bedroom there in my bedroom, and on the floor is all the t-ball equipment, right? And so there sits my athletic cup. Now, this little girl that's with me, we're both in fourth grade, she picks it up and she holds it. Now, if you don't know what an athletic cup is, it's a triangle, it's about that big, and uh, it has blue foam around it usually, it's got some holes in it, and uh, it's used to protect a boy's private parts from a ball hitting you there. So you might see where this is going, right? <laughs> so she picks it up and she goes, what is this? She'd never seen one before. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, oh, set that down. That is so gross. Set that down. But I couldn't speak. I was so embarrassed. No words came out. I'm just staring at her thinking to myself, 
ooh, put that down. And she goes, oh, oh, I know what this is. It's an oxygen mask. And she puts it up to her face, and she starts breathing in and out like it's an oxygen mask. And I'm thinking, oh, gosh. Now, that may have just grossed everybody out. They sure grossed me out, right? But my point to the story is, if you don't know the purpose of a thing, you're going to misuse that thing. And that is so true in life. So my question is, if we don't know the purpose of our life, if we hadn't identified that, we're potentially just misusing our life. We're not fulfilling God's purpose in our life. Now, here's the, here's the other deal. Who do we ask what the purpose of a thing is? So we can't ask, in that example that I just gave you from my childhood, can't ask the Athletic Cup, hey, you know, what, what, what is your purpose? The creator of the Athletic Cup can tell us. So the creator of the Athletic Cup put instructions in the packaging that it came with. But that packaging wasn't in my bedroom. And I was frozen, not able to say anything. So we've got to go to the creator of the thing to find out what the purpose is. So when it comes to our life, think about that. We've got to go to the creator. We've got to go to God and seek him to find out what our purpose is in life so that we don't misuse it. Amen? But too often, we're going to the wrong source to find out what our purpose is. We're not going to the creator of the thing. We're going to other people. We're going to people saying, hey, what do you think? What do you think I should do? I mean, we, we're worried about people's opinions of us. Do you like me? Do you like my clothes? Do you like my hair? Do you like what I'm doing? Am I important? Do I fit in? Am I good enough? Are we buddies? Do you like my car? Do you like my job? Do you like my house? What do you think? Should I buy this house? Should I buy that car? I mean, we're always seeking others' opinion for the decisions and choices we have to make in our life. And we're concerned with those decisions that we're making, how other people will respond to them. And we need to really not worry about those things. So it's so easy to get caught up in those approvals. Here's a big thought for you. Living for the approval of people keeps you from the purposes of God. Man, you need to write that down. I encourage you to write that down. Living for the approval of people will keep you from the purposes of God in your life because they will distract you. So I want to challenge you today, again, to choose purpose over popularity and realize, as we started the message with, the sum total of our choices add up to a destination in our life. We become what our choices lead us to. Let me give you an example of a guy that had to make a choice over purpose, over popularity, Moses. So if you go to Hebrews chapter 11 and read the story of Moses that's uh, accounted, his account of his life in Hebrews chapter 11, Moses was a guy that was born into uh, slavery. He was adopted essentially into Pharaoh's family. You may know the story, but if you don't, uh, Again, he was born into poverty and slavery, but he was adopted into Pharaoh's uh, family. So he was living a life of luxury, really. Extravagance, royalty, comfort. He had tremendous comfort in his life. Yet at one, at one point along his journey, he made a choice. He could have very easily given in to the comfort of Pharaoh's family, which he had been adopted into, but he chose God's purpose for his life. Hebrews 11, 24, let me read that to you. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. You know, he, he wasn't Pharaoh's daughter, and that's how he was known, and that's why he was adopted into the family. But he made a choice. At, when he grew up, he made a choice and refused to be known as Pharaoh's daughter. He decided God's purposes were greater than the treasures that he had in Egypt. Think about that. Think about that decision that Moses had to make. So what did he choose? Well, he chose purpose. He knew what his purpose was. He knew what God's purpose was in his life. And he chose that over the comforts and royalty and lavish lifestyle that he had in Egypt. He chose purpose over popularity. He chose calling over comfort. So let me take a minute and talk about this word purpose. Because a lot of people get kind of freaked out and frustrated when they start talking about purpose. They're like, man, I don't even know if I know what my purpose is. What is my purpose? Chris, I'm not quite sure. And when people start talking about that and they ask me questions like that, well, I don't even know what my purpose is. They're talking about the big P purpose, the big overarching thing, the major thing in life. I don't know what that is. I haven't been able to identify what my big purpose in life is. Why am I here? What's the big reason? What's the big thing, right? This is important. I want you to get this. When we talk about purpose and your purpose in life, I don't want you to think about the big capital P purpose, the big overarching thing. I want you to start thinking about the little lowercase p. Some will call these lowercase p purposes instead of big uppercase p purposes. What is your purpose in the moment? What is your purpose in the minute? What is your purpose 
right now? What is your purpose today? What's your purpose this week? What's your purpose this month? What's your purpose, your small, in the moment, in the circumstance? What's your purpose right now? Instead of the big overarching thing that might get a little confusing and a little frustrating. But if we'll stay faithful in fulfilling God's purposes in the moment, in the circumstance, then God can trust us and graduate us up to bigger purposes in our life. I mean, I have a lot of purposes in life. When one of my purposes is to be a loving and faithful husband to my wife. Another purpose in life is to be a good father to my children. Another purpose in life is for me to be a good business leader and executive for the company that I work for and to lead the way that they expect me to lead. And another purpose is for the Rock World Ministries is to prepare and deliver hopefully an anointed message that can impact and enrich your life. I mean, we have to make sure that we understand the purpose of the moment and that we seek after God's direction in those things and not get frustrated with the overarching thing. So I call it chasing little peas, stacking little peas. Worry about the purpose in the moment. Someone walks into your office right now in the moment, they walk into your office and they're frustrated and discouraged and they've got an issue. And your purpose right then in that moment is to offer support, love, and maybe help them in some way. Be faithful in that thing. Be faithful in the little purpose of the circumstance or the moment. And then God can trust you and give you uh, middle case P's. And then when you're faithful there, he can give you the bigger case P's and expand your purpose out because you've been faithful for the little things. That's where you need to start. And that's what I want to encourage you on a day in and day out basis. Get up every single day and fulfill the purpose of God in the moment or in the circumstance. So I want you to think about it that way. The more we live and walk by the Spirit, the more we get tuned into God, the more we spend time in prayer and do these things, the more often we'll be able to fulfill the lowercase p purposes, and then God can graduate us and trust us with bigger visions and give us more passion and more purpose as we mature and grow in life. And that never stops. Uh, you're watching this in February, but this is actually the week after Christmas that I'm filming this. And I, on January 1st, I'm turning 49 years old, and I'm still seeking God to grow me and mature me in every area of my life. So some days I've got to worry about the lowercase p purpose and not the big overarching thing. And I want to encourage you to do that. Did you get that? I hope you got that. Amen. All right. So be faithful in the small things. Now there is power in purpose. When you're fulfilling your purpose, there's power in that. It will give you power to succeed. Amen. And I, I'm going to give you three thoughts as we come to the back half of the message today. Three thoughts about power and purpose. Number one, purpose diminishes distractions. I mean, we've got to get rid of the clutter, get rid of the distractions. And people and popularity is a big way that we get distracted. We've got to realize what's going on in our life. So one of the things that purpose does, it will, it will diminish your distractions in your life. If you're focused on purpose, the distractions will be diminished. So one of the biggest distractions in our life is comparing ourselves to others. So think about that. Stop comparing yourself to others. Stop worrying about popularity. I mean, who cares what they think? Well, we do. We should care what people think. We should love one another. We're going to talk a little bit about that in just a minute. We should be godly and encourage people and support people and love one another. But you know, if, they're, if they are against us, if they're a negative force in our life, uh, then it doesn't matter. We shouldn't be worried about if they liked our latest Facebook post or if they commented on a picture we put on Instagram or whatever the case may be. We can't please everybody all the time, but we can please God. And it's a curse to compare ourselves to others. It's a major distraction to worry about comparing where you're at in life compared to where someone else is in life. Man, they have a better car, they have a better job, they make more money, they have a nicer house, their kids are nicer and better than mine, whatever. I mean, that, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Focusing on your purpose, focusing on your purpose will diminish those distractions in your life. Nehemiah is a great example of that. In the Bible, in Nehemiah, he got frustrated. In Nehemiah chapter 2, I think they talk about this. He got frustrated because the wall had been torn down and the gates had been burned. And he went up on the wall and he knew his purpose that God had led him to, to rebuild the wall. And he went to do that. And as soon as he did that, and he's up there working on top of that wall, two people showed up, the scripture says, and start uh, throwing insults at him and saying, what are you doing? You're not going to be able to rebuild this wall. Are you stupid? Are you crazy? This will never happen. You might as well come down now and stop. It's not going to work. You're not going to be successful. Come on down. And Nehemiah looked at him and said, I am doing a great work. I cannot come down from this wall. That's how the focus you got to be. You got to be committed to God's purposes because I guarantee you that distractions will show up. When you start doing the purposes of God, 
there's going to be forces that show up in your life. The enemy's going to see to it. As soon as you start doing the purpose of God, the enemies of, of God's purpose will show up in your life and they will try to distract you, insult you, give you reasons to quit, not to do it. And you've got to stand strong in faith and make sure that you're going to fulfill God's purpose in your life. Man, that's a blessing. I hope that really blesses you. And I love what he said. I love what Nehemiah said. I'm doing a great work. I can't come down. So when those distractions show up in your life, say, I'm doing a great work. I can't quit. I can't come down. Amen. Trust me, when you decide to have purpose in your life, distractions will show up. And we've got to be willing to stand against that. There's power and purpose. So I'm not living for other people's approval. I'm living for God's approval. Amen. Number two, number two thought, purpose pushes you through pain and resistance. So when you're about the business of fulfilling your purpose and you wake up with passion and purpose in your life, that purpose will push you through any resistance and push you through pain in life. Man, the greatest example I can think of that is when Kim gave birth to all three of our children. Man, there's pain at the, at the delivery, amen? But she had a purpose. She was giving birth to those children those days. So she was giving birth to my son. And when there was challenges and obstacles and pain and resistance, if anybody in that uh, hospital room would have said, you know what, this ain't gonna work today. We're just gonna stop and we'll just keep the baby inside. That wouldn't, she wouldn't have done that. She had purpose. She was going to deliver those, those babies. Amen. So she pushed through the pain and the resistance and fulfilled the purpose and delivered our children. Just think about that. Purpose will push us through pain and push us through resistance because we have a purpose. We've got a goal and we're going to accomplish it. And we can't be distracted no matter what comes our way. There is greater value in serving God's purposes than living for the approval of people. Think about that. There is greater value in living and fulfilling God's purpose in your life than seeking the approval of other people. Amen? Number three, purpose empowers you to please God. Purpose empowers you to please God. So write that down. Purpose will lead you and guide you. We have to choose purpose over popularity. Say that again in your mind or out loud if you can. I choose purpose over popularity. One more time, I choose purpose over popularity. So trying to please everyone is unproductive and quite frankly, it's just exhausting. It's exhausting to try to please everybody, but we can seriously, we can please God. How do we please God? Well, let's go to the word and check it out. When we live by faith, we please God. I'll give you a couple scriptures to close this message as we come down the home stretch. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse three. If you're on your Bible, flip over there. For this is the will of God that you be sanctified. Now the word sanctified, an amplified version says to be separated and set apart from sin. So that's really clear in the scripture, right? That the will of God is for us to be sanctified or the will of God is for us to be set apart away from sin. So it's telling us a couple things. First off, it's telling us to be an accountant, to be a businessman, to be a missionary. It's not telling us that, right? It's telling us that his will for our life is to be set apart, to set ourselves apart from the craziness of this world and to be holy away from sin, to be sanctified. Amen. Jesus tells us also the greatest commandment that we can fulfill is to love one another as we love ourselves, as we love the Lord. That's John chapter 13, 34. So set ourselves apart and love people. That's where it starts and be faithful, right? The righteous shall live by faith. We shall live by faith in God. The good news is we can please God. We can please God by living a life of purpose and faith, set ourselves apart from sin and to seek after him. And know that his grace and forgiveness is, is good enough for us. No matter how bad we've acted or no matter what craziness we've got ourselves involved in or how much sin we, we commit on a daily basis, God loves us, forgives us, and his grace and mercy is good enough to cover all those things up, cover all of our blemishes, and get rid of it all. And if we'll just stay faithful to him and just love on him and let him love on us and have purpose and stack up those little peas, man, we can please God. Make that choice. Amen. So ask yourself, am I going to make decisions and choices today for the approval of others, or am I going to make decisions and choices today that will please God? Remember, you can't please everybody. It won't happen, but you can please God. It's much easier to please God than it is to please people. Believe me. So are you ready to be driven by the purposes of God in your life? I hope so. I hope this message is a blessing to you and that you're going to be motivated and driven to fulfill the purposes of God in your life. Be faithful in the lowercase p. Stack up those little p's and watch God lead you to the bigger, oh, bigger thing in your life. Let's close today 
with a couple things. I want to pray for you, and then I want to give you some really important messages. So hang in there for just a few more minutes. But let's pray first. Father, I thank you so much. I thank you for the people who want to serve you in every way. God, I'm going to ask you to give everyone that's watched this video opportunities, more and more opportunities to have little case P purposes in the moment, in the circumstance, in the day, in the week, Lord. Give them the opportunity to have purpose in that circumstance. Help us above all else to serve you, Lord. I pray that you will allow us to have your wisdom and to gain understanding in, in the things that we're seeking after. And uh, turn away temptation and turn away distractions and know that we are here to please you, Lord. And pleasing you is what we should do and not worry about popularity and pleasing others that we can't please anyway. Give us the faith and the obedience in the moment to do those things. Help us choose purpose. Help us choose purpose over popularity. And we glorify you in that, in Jesus' name. Amen. Last few things. Listen, if you're listening to this message today, and you thought, man, that was a really cool message, but you're not a believer in Christ. You haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Man, make that decision today. And if you do, if you make that decision, all you got to do is ask him, hey, Jesus, I believe you're son of God. Come into my heart and into my life and guide me and lead me. I accept you as my Savior. It's really that simple. It's not complicated. If you make that decision today or if this has inspired you, I want you to reach out to us. You can email us at info at therockwm.com. That's our email address, info at therockwm.com. Info at therockwm.com is the email address. Or just go out to the website. Therockwm.com is the website, and uh, there's contact forms on there, and you can communicate with us in private. Or if you'd like to leave a, a comment on the social media platform that you're watching this message on, and really encourage you to do that. If you haven't hit that like button, hit that like button, punch that wow face, uh, leave a comment, at least your city and state so we know where you watched us from. Those things mean so much to us and it blesses us to know that people are watching out there and getting something from uh, the videos. Finally, next week we're gonna be talking about control. I mean, if you're a control freak, we're gonna talk about surrender over control next week. It's gonna be a powerful part two in this series of I Choose. We also have teen messages. If you have a teenager, go out to our website, therockwm.com, and look for our teen section or preteen. If you're an 11, 12, or 13 year old, uh, you can go to our preteen message. And we have a youth message as well for the elementary school age kids. There is a weekly message, this main message that you're watching today, a teen message, a preteen message, and a youth message. Every week we have a new fresh message for you out at the website. So go out there and check it out. And finally, if you feel led to give us a financial gift, certainly no, under no obligation to do that. But if you feel led, man, I'd really like to support this ministry. It certainly takes uh, finances for us to do the things that we're doing. You can go to the website and go to our giving page. It gives you all the instructions you need. Or very simply, you can just text us. So text 678-771-6777. The number's right here on the screen. You can just text the word GIVE to that number. And uh, the first time you do it, you have to fill out a little bit of information, some contact information and stuff. But after that, you can just text uh, $20 or $50 or $100, whatever you want, and uh, we'll receive your gift. And it will go to help spread uh, the kingdom of God throughout the world. So we thank you for considering that, and we thank you for watching. Make sure you come back every Sunday and watch the next message next week. We're going to be talking about surrender over control. So stay tuned right now for a preview of next week's message. Have a great week. God bless. What may I get for you this evening? I think I'll... I'll order for us. We will split the absolute perfection, um, but instead of anxiety, could I get a flawless side of raised expectations, please? Of course. And how would you like your circumstances? Micromanaged? Micromanaged. Oh, and please tell the chef that no matter how Willie prepares it, I'll still be dissatisfied. Will do. Oh, and can we get some 38% shinier silverware? Yes, sir. What a close to but not quite perfect evening.